Good morning, everyone. Today we'll read the Book of Isaiah, chapter seventeen. Ah,、uh, let's. I want to respond to Gino's sharing. Um, is like quite nervous for the parents to find the right high school for the children because that also helps to determine their future and. When I helped my son to prepare for his portfolio for applying to high school, I spent more effort than my own university project. But that's always the grace of God. Today we read Isaiah chapter seventeen. I divide into three sections. First one to three, proclaiming God's judgment against Syria and Israel, and then first four to eleven. About that day, in that day, in that day, and then because because and、uh, because and how would that day be? In the last section, verse twelve to fourteen, about the destiny of the nations. So let's first look at the first section, verse one to three. The burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease and being from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. The cities of our、uh, ear are forsaken. There will be four flocks which lie down, and no one will make them afraid. The fortress also will cease from Ephraim, the kingdom from Damascus, and the remnant of Syria. They will be as the glory of the children of Israel, says the Lord of hosts. The most important phase is the last line. That's the Lord of Hosts. God has spoken. The word of God is powerful. And if you have good memory, you know, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. God says, "Let there be light," and there was light. God's word has the creative power. It cannot be cancelled. It's not. Useless. It will not return void. God's word is so powerful that God only needs to speak one word, and and、uh, materials can be formed from nothing. And this complicated universe has come to be. So God's word will become true from nothing to something. Nothing can change that. So says the Lord of Hosts. And what does God want to accomplish about the burden against Damascus? Damascus is the capital of Iran. The prophecy was against Damascus. That is against、uh, this country, Iran. And God spoke this prophecy Himself in the original language. The word prophecy is burden. So this prophecy, this burden against Damascus, will surely come true. And what is it? Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city. At that time, Iran was still very strong. Coming to chapter seventeen. The time when the prophecy was being prophesied, Abraham was a strong nation, and Assyria was still strong.、Uh, Assyria was still rising up, but at this time, God gave this burden prophecy to the prophet, and as if Damascus has been destroyed already, but actually. At the time of Isaiah, Damascus was very strong, but spiritually, God has already sent judgment, and、uh, just waiting for it to be fulfilled, and it surely will come to pass. So, just like、uh, the judge has made a judgment, and So the judgment is confirmed, just waiting to be executed. Like if someone is sent to imprisonment, once the sentence is out, then it's done.
And so spiritually, Damascus would look、uh, would not exist anymore. It would be destroyed. And if a capital becomes a ruinous heap, does that country still exist? No. And it says the cities of、uh, Aora. For second, there will be four flocks which lie down, and no one will make them afraid. Aroa is a very important city in, in Iran, but then it will become a place to、uh, for the flocks to graze. What does that mean? That place will. Be full of grass. It's no. It will no longer be a city, but the flocks will eat the grass there, and they will not be afraid because no one will be there. The city will be desolate. You know, the sheep are very timid and shy, but if they are not afraid at all, that means there's no one, no people at all. And it says the fortress also will cease from Ephraim,、uh, because Ephraim wanted to seek its fortress from Damascus. Actually, in Isaiah chapter seven, it was prophesied that Abraham would be judged together with Israel, because the northern kingdom, Israel, after they formed. An alliance with Aram, they wanted Judah, the southern kingdom, to join to join in their alliance. But the southern kingdom, Judah, wanted to seek help from Assyria instead to form alliance with Assyria against Aram. So actually, Israel had.、Uh, Plan together with Aram to kill the king of Judah and to set up another king, but that king would not be the descendant of David. So God intervened because that was against God's plan. God had promised that someone from the line of David would sit on the throne forever. And so, the Northern Kingdom's plan was completely against God's will, and then especially when the Northern Kingdom should be the brothers of the Southern Kingdom, and、uh, but the Northern Kingdom wanted to find someone outside to attack his own brother, so. You can imagine how angry God must be. Just like if, as a father, you see、uh, the older brother trying to find help from outside to to fight and harm the younger brother, the father would be would be very angry, and so the fortress will cease from his frame. The kingdom from Damascus and the remnant of Syria, they will be as the glory of the children of Israel. So the problem was you sh should have、uh, sought the help from God and not from Damascus. The Bible is mentioned that、uh, if you replace God with other gods, then the sorrows will increase, and so. Damascus became the protection and peace of Ephraim. Ephraim had put all its hope on Damascus, and that was wrong. Actually, Aram was affected when the northern kingdom treated Damascus as God. So sometimes we joke: never treat your Cell leader or your pastor as God, otherwise、uh, they will be affected too. The remnant of Syria will be as the glory of the children of Israel,、uh, which means the glory of Israel will also be dimmer.
and will disappear. At that time, the Israelites treated their idols as their glory. They introduced all the idols from all the nations into their own country, and they treated them as their glory. They had two altars, one in Bethel and the other in. The other in Dan. Actually, today you cannot find the golden calf anymore, which they set up as their god. So the glory of Israel will surely die out, and so would Syria, because they formed an alliance together. So God dealt with them together. So when God's judgment. Came, both nations were punished together. They would no longer be remembered, and this will surely come to pass because the Lord of Hosts has talked about it already. In the heavenly court, it's determined already. And then, verse four to eleven. It's about in that day, when that day of execution of God's judgment, how would that be like? It says in that day, verse seven. In that day, and verse nine. In that day, let's look at verse four first. In that day, it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob will wane, and the fatness of his flesh. Grow lean. It shall be as when the harvester gathers the grain and reaps the heads with his arm. It shall be as he who gathers heads of grain in the vat of Rephaim. Yet gleaning grapes will be left in it, like the shaking of an olive tree. Two or three olives at the top of the uppermost bowl. Four or five in its most fruitful branches, says the Lord God of Israel. So what will that day be? That day when the judgment of God comes, what would that be like? First, let's look at Jacob. Jacob is Israel,、um, but it's not the name of Israel is not used because it's determined that、uh, it was determined that Israel would be destroyed. So the glory of Jacob will wane, and the fatness of his flesh grow lean. That means the country would grow weaker and weaker. And the prophet used two pictures to tell us. It's like giving a word picture in the couple's camp. Word picture is very powerful, and God used two word images to say, describe the situation. Just like when the harvester gathers the grain and reaps the heads with his arm. Actually, the Israelites had a custom that they would not、um, gather all the grains. They would leave some left for the poor, for the needy to pick up the grains. So that's why we have the Book of Ruth,、uh, talking about the poor gathering the leftover grains on the ground from the ground. So, as the landlord, harvest time is the time he has. He will be、uh, that he has been waiting for a long time. So, harvest would take away maybe ninety, more than ninety percent of all the crops. So, God used this picture to say that. The remnants that will be left are like the grains left in the harvest field, and God was telling the Israelites, exile and the loss of his country is God's sentence to them. Later, when the Assyrian army would come, they would really destroy Israel and take away all the people. To exile, except the weak ones and the elderly and the women, only very few were left. 
more than 90% were exempt. Rephaim is a place near Jerusalem which has abundant crops. And another word picture is like the gleaning of olive trees. The Israelites had the custom that you should not glean and take away all the olives from the trees. You should leave some left. Maybe three or four or five、uh, countable with hands. So the Israelites would be, the remnant would be like、uh, the harvest field after harvesting, and also after cleaning or、uh, harvesting the olive trees. Verse seven. In that day, a man will look to his mask, to his maker, and his eyes will have respect for the holy one of Israel. He will not look to the altars, the work of his hands. He will not respect what his fingers have made, nor the wooden images, nor the incense altars. So, in that day of judgment, people will look up, up to their creator, to their maker. The Holy One of Israel. They will not look to the altars or the work of His hands anymore. They will not honor what His fingers have made, and the wooden images referring to the idols or the incense altars for the idols. The idols will all be destroyed and disappear. Israelites followed nations who worship a lot of idols, like the sun god Ashtoreth, etc. And、uh, in that day, you will see judgment and revival together, just like two sides of the same coin. Actually, behind judgment is grace. And God's discipline is for our good. It also makes God sad to strike us, but God's will is that there is salvation and mercy. If there's no mercy, God doesn't need to leave us. He can just destroy us. He just wants. To、uh, discipline us. First nine. In that day, his strong cities will be as a forsaken bough and an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. Desolation comes because there's judgment. So we should reflect in our own life. Is anything desolate in our life? We should ask, why is that? Is it because of God's discipline? If so, then we should we should、uh, repent. Why would there be such a judgment? Verse ten: Because you have forgotten the God of your salvation and have not been mindful of the rock of your stronghold. Therefore, you will plant pleasant plants and set up foreign cities. In the day, you will make your plant to grow. And in the morning you will make your seed to flourish, but the harvest will be a heap of ruins in the day of grief and desperate sorrow, because you have not put God first. If you have not remembered the rock, and you have attributed everything what is good in your life to the idols, and so therefore this will happen. You will lose your harvest. You will labor for vain, in vain. At that time, the people believe in a dead god. Of、uh, and he was the god of harvest. And every year he would die once. And then when springtime comes, this god will resurrect. 
And so the women they would build a garden and plant different seeds there. And、uh, when the sun comes out, the seedlings will grow and sprout quickly. But then they will also wither soon. So just like this, that God, God of death, and they will weep for the death of this God of death. And when they weep, the tears will be like water and revive this God of death. And so that was why God said.、Uh, You will plant pleasant trees and set up foreign seedlings, but you will have nothing. So actually, that was not so easy to grow crops like that.、Uh, Worshipping all the idols with all these rituals, but they never would think that God's judgment would come, and they would lose everything. So, brothers and sisters, we may work hard all our life, and we accumulate a lot of money. But can we keep that? If everything leaves us like having wings, then what's the point? That's the worship of idols. It's like、uh, worshiping the god of death. And if we pursue the world, in the end, we have nothing left. When God's judgment comes, all this will disappear. We will have nothing left, and that will be the outcome of Aram. They will have nothing in the end. Idols can give us a little bit of success, but in the end, they will take everything away from us, just like a gambler. They start from winning, earning a lot of money, and then they think that they can continue to win. But in the end, they, as they gamble more, they will lose more, and in the end, they will lose all their properties and even lose their life. And then, and lastly, verse twelve to fourteen, the weeping of the nations, the destiny of the nations. First twelve. Woe to the multitude of many people who make a noise like the roar of the seas, and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. The nations will rush like the rushing of many waters, but God will rebuke them, and they will flee far away and be chased like the chaff of the mountains before the wind, like a rolling thing before the wild wind. Then behold, at even tide, trouble. And before the morning, he's no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us, and the lot of those who rob us. So, when the Israelites read this, they must be so happy. But the nations will weep. The nations, oh, we sister God, they were so proud, and they made noise, a noise like the roar of the seas, in the Psalms. Um, the psalmist always use the waves as pride to describe pride and、uh, the work of the enemies. So the nations, as they resisted the God, as they were so proud,、uh, like the waves, like the tsunami, like、uh, it will come to swallow everything, and irresistible. When they came with strong power, like the rushing of mighty borders, no matter how proud they are, when God rebuked them, they would flee far away. The nations, they will know that they cannot resist God. They cannot flee from God. When God's judgment would come, they would be chased like the chaff off. Of the mountains before the wind, they would all be blown away, and the nations were like a rolling thing. But before the wild wind, the、uh, tornado, 
they would be blown away too. So even though the nations were proud when God rebuked them, you cannot find them anymore because they will be blown away, like a blow, things blown away by a tornado, a wild wind. So the pride could only last for a short time. It's not even worth mentioning before God. That will be the outcome and judgment. When we read this chapter, you see that those who attack Israel would not have a good outcome. You can look at history; you see that. Even in、um, modern Israel, the nations around them like to attack it. But if you attack it, it becomes even stronger. From Six Day War. Or from the independence war to the atonement war, every time someone would attack Israel, it would become stronger. It would even gain more land. But those nations who attack it would become weaker and weaker. And you can really see God is still taking care of His people. So we need to pray for. Our country and the nations do not say anything bad about Israel, because Israel has God and a master. When Aram and Assyria treated Israel badly, in the end they would be punished by God. So we know that everything is in God's hand. We should all return quickly, and then we can keep our lives safe. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today let's reflect. Where does our security come from? Do we feel like sometimes we labor, but then it's in vain? Do we feel like? Uh, there's only a few left in our harvest, in our olive trees, four or five in its most fruitful branches. Is it because we still rely on the work of our hands that we do not look to our Maker or look to the rock of our life? Yes, Lord, we confess that sometimes we still use our own plan and our own effort. We spend more time in other things and put you in the end. Lord, please forgive us that we forget about you. We have not been mindful of the rock, the source of our strength. We have forgotten the God of our salvation. We really. Rely on something else, just like、uh, the Northern Kingdom, Israel. They have relied on Aram, and today we see that when Israel relied on Aram, you destroyed even Aram. So, Lord, thank you, because in everything, in judgment, you give us revival. Lord, we're willing to repent, to return to you, to look upon you. As Scripture says, man will look to their Maker. We are created by you. You care for us. You have saved us. Why don't we look upon you, Lord? We will return to you. We only follow you because you are Maker, you are the Creator. So we bring everything, our problems, our situations to you, our difficulties to God, and let's pray to God, and only look upon God now. He's our Creator. 
Lord, you are the rock of of our strength. We will turn to you, not rely on our own strength and power. We will not rely on anything else, but we return to you. Also, we see today that、uh, if we lead other people to ourselves, that will lead to our destruction. Just like when Hiram became、uh, the source of help for Israel, so today, do we, when we help others, do we lead them to us or to God? And、uh, when we teach our children, do them, do we bring them to God? So today, let's tell the Lord again: I'm not the God of others. Only you are God. So we lift up our families, our cell members to you. We cannot be their God. We cannot be their security. Only you alone can be their God. Lord, we look upon you, fix our eyes on you. Thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah chapter seventeen, verse seven. In that day, a man will look to his maker, and his eyes will have respect for the holy one of Israel. In that day, a man will look to his maker, and his eyes will have respect for the holy one of Israel. So, brothers and sisters, let's look upon our maker, respect for. The Holy One of Israel, because He's the one who has defeated the nations and rebuked all the proud waves in your life, the difficulties and waves in your life. Only God can cease that. Only He can calm that. He's the Lord who can calm the sea. He can lead us to go. Peacefully, so we should only look upon Him, the Holy One of Israel. If we can understand this truth and keep this truth, our life will be different. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, may You help us open our spiritual eyes, so that we know that You have the power to calm the storm. You can rebuke all the storm. The key is if we have a good relationship with You. That in our life, in the boat of our life, are you there? When the wind and the waves are strong, we need you in our boat of life. So may you help us, so that we can look upon you, the value, the holy one of Israel. Because you will rebuke the waves for us to calm them, Lord, we look upon you, put you first, and magnify you. May you help us to know you more and connect deeper with you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you all. Our morning devotion will end here. Amen.